Hello, my name is Natasha Townsend and I am Associate Electrical Engineering Editor for Design Grill. Today I will be discussing MOSFETs basics for the learning engineer. Power MOSFETs are voltage control power devices with a gate or threshold turn power on. These devices are designed to handle significant power levels where power MOSFETs are mainly used is in integrated circuits such as power supplies, DC to DC converters, and low voltage motor controllers. What they do is behave as a switch and do it very quickly at high speeds. I would like to thank Sammy Najem for raising the topic for those in our audience who are engineers learning the fundamentals of basics of electronics. Sammy also designed the slides as a simple guide to follow. Power MOSFET Basics, a simple guide for the learning engineer. Diodes are the simplest semiconductors. It is a device that blocks current in one direction while allowing current flow in another direction. In other words, a diode's characteristics are like a switch where it can conduct current in only one direction. Diodes can be used in a number of ways. For example, a device that uses batteries often contains a diode that protects the device if you insert the batteries backwards. The diode simply blocks any current from leaving the battery if it is reversed. This protects the sensitive electronics in the device. In an N-type material, the electron is called the majority carrier, accepts negative ion, and is the hole in the minority carrier. Whereas in the P-type material, the number of holes is the majority carrier, positive ions are donors, and the electron is the minority carrier. In the middle of the P-N junction is the depletion region, which will be discussed later. Under a four biased conditions, the anode end of the diode is ideally positive, while the cathode end is ideally negative. The diode's forward voltage is due to the electric field, the P-type positive and N-type negative, which has been established. Diodes are made of different materials. Today's diodes are primarily made up of silicon. For chemical bonding in a silicon lattice, all silicon atoms bond perfectly to four neighbors, leaving no free electrons to conduct electric current. This makes a silicon crystal an insulator rather than a conductor. In an N-type silicon, phosphorus or arsenic is added to the silicon in small quantities. Phosphorus and arsenic each have five outer electrons, so they're out of place when they get into the silicon lattice. The fifth electron has nothing to bond to, so it's free to move around. It takes only a very small quantity of the impurity to create enough free electrons to allow electric current to flow through the silicon. The n-type silicon is a good conductor. Electrons have a negative charge, hence the name n-type. In p-type doping, boron and gallium is the dopient. Boron and gallium each have three outer electrons. When mixed into the silicon lattice, they form holes in the lattice where a silicon electron has nothing to bond to. The absence of an electron creates the effect of a positive charge, hence the name p-type. Holes can conduct current. A hole happily accepts an electron from a neighbor, moving the hole over space. P-type silicon is a good conductor. A minute amount of either N-type or P-type doping turns the silicon crystal from a good insulator into a viable, but not great, conductor, hence the name semiconductor. A semiconductor material that has been subjected to the doping process is called an extrinsic material. The two types of extrinsic materials of immeasurable importance is an N-type and p-type. And in p-type materials are formed by adding a predetermined number of impurity atoms into a geranium or silicon base. An n-type is created by five valence electrons such as antinomy, arsenic, and phosphorus. The 
P-type material is formed by doping a pure geranium or silicon crystal with impurity atoms having three valence electrons. The three elements most frequently used are boron, gallium, and indium. The semiconductor diode is formed by simply bringing geranium or silicon together. At the instant the two materials are joined, the electrons and holes in the region of the junction will combine, resulting in a lack of carriers in the region near the junction. This region of uncovered positive and negative ions is called the depletion region due to the depletion of carriers in this region. Since the diode is a two-terminal device, the application of voltage across its terminal leaves three possibilities. No bias, forward bias or diffusion, or reverse bias, which can be called transition, migration, or depletion. Diffusion causes the migration of holes and electrons across the border, while migration depletes the charge carriers, causes ions to form locally on the junction. Now that we know about diodes, how does it work in MOSFETs? The acronym for MOSFET is Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. A simple illustration of the device is one of a faucet. A faucet has a source where water comes from. The gate is similar to a valve where you control the water flow and the drain is similar to where the water flows into. A MOSFET's purpose is to have a higher input impedance and buffering applications used in high frequency designs. These designs are primarily used in the construction of integrated circuits in digital computers. Its thermal stability and other general characteristics make it extremely popular in computer circuit designs. A typical MOSFET is a depletion type. From the previous slide, it is understood that depletion means that the diode is reverse bias. The basic construction of the N-channel depletion type MOSFET is a slab of P-type material which is formed from a silicon base and is referred to as a substrate and is the foundation upon which the device is constructed on. The source and drain terminals are connected through metallic contacts to the N-dope regions linked by an N-channel. The gate is also connected to a metal contact surface but remains isolated from the end channel by a very thin silicon dioxide layer referred to as the dielectric or semiconductor. There is no direct electrical connection between the gate and the channel of the MOSFET. It is the insulating layer of silicon dioxide in the MOSFET construction that accounts for the very desirable high input impedance of the device. The construction of a P-channel depletion type MOSFET is exactly the reverse of an N-channel type with the exception of an N-type substrate in D doped regions under the drain and source connections. The graphic symbols for an N and P channel depletion type MOSFET are shown. The symbols chosen reflect the actual construction of the device. The lack of connection due to the gate insulator between the gate and the channel is represented by a space between the gate and the other terminals of the symbol. The vertical line representing the channel is connected between the drain and the source is supported by the substrate. Two symbols are provided for each type of channel to reflect the fact that in some cases the substrate is externally available while in others it is not. The basic construction of the N-channel enhancement type MOSFET is shown. A slab of P-type material is formed from a silicon base and is again referred to as the substrate. As with the depletion type MOSFET, the substrate is sometimes internally connected to the source material, while in other cases a fourth lead is made available for external control of its potential level. The source and drain terminals are again constructed through metallic contacts to end dope regions, 
But note the absence of a channel as a constructed component of the device. The silicon dioxide layer is still present to isolate the gate metallic platform from the region between the drain and source, but now it is simply separated from a section of the P-type material. Therefore, the construction of an enhancement type MOSFET is quite similar to that of a depletion type MOSFET, except the absence of a channel between the drain and source terminals. As before, a P-channel device is exactly in the reverse of the N-channel device. An enhancement type MOSFET can be either an N-channel or P-channel device. The N-channel symbol simply shows the schematic for the gate, drain, and source where the source goes into the transistor. On the P-channel symbol, the source points out of the transistor. The dashed line between the drain and source was chosen to reflect the fact that a channel does not exist between the two under no bias conditions. It is, in fact, the only difference between the symbols for the depletion type and enhancement type MOSFETs. Here are examples of the arrow in the circuit symbol in an NPN transistor points out of the device. NPN means not pointing in and conversely the arrow points into the center of the symbol for a PMP or pointing in transistor. A feature of power MOSFETs is that they inherently have built into them an integral reverse body drain diode. The diode is effectively connected with this anode to the drain of a P-channel MOSFET and its cathode to the source of the device. The existence of this diode is explained by this illustration. When the source terminal is made positive with respect to the drain, current can flow through the middle of the source cell across a forward biased PN junction. In the reverse direction, the power MOSFET thus behaves like a PN junction rectifier. The integral body drain diode is a real circuit element and its current handling capability is typically as high as that of the transistor itself. Some circuits require an, an inverse rectifier to be connected across a switching device and in these circuits it will often be possible to utilize the body drain diode or the power MOSFET provided the proper precautions are taken. In power MOSFETs, there are different types of devices. This is a planar vertical MOSFET device, or VMOS. In most power MOSFETs, the N type is positively charged. The P type is the body junction region and is shorted through source metallization to avoid accidental turn on of the parasitic bipolar transistor. When no bias is applied to the gate, the power MOSFET is capable of supporting a high drain voltage through the reverse bias P body and N positive epi junction. In high voltage devices, most of the applied voltage is supported by the lightly doped epi layer. A thicker and more lightly doped epi supports higher breakdown voltage but with the increased on resistance. In lower voltage devices, the P body doping becomes comparable to the N epi layer and supports part of the applied voltage. If the P body is not designed thick or heavy enough, the depletion region can punch through to the N positive source region and cause lower breakdown. But if it is overdesigned, the channel resistance and threshold voltage will also increase. So careful design of the body and epidoping and thickness is needed to optimize the performance. On data sheets, the breakdown voltage BVDSS is usually defined as the drain to source 
voltage when leakage current is 250 microamps. The leakage current is defined as IDSS and is measured at 100% of the BVDSS rating. As temperature increases, IDSS increases as the breakdown voltage also increases. The breakdown voltage is the voltage at which the reverse bias body drift diode breaks down and significant current starts to flow between the source and drain by the avalanche multiplication process while the gate and the source are shorted together. The breakdown voltage is normally measured 250 microamps drain current. For drain voltages below breakdown voltage and with no bias on the gate, no channel is formed under the gate at the surface and the drain voltage is entirely supported by the reverse biased body drift pinion junction. The term vertical is due primarily to the fact that the channel is now formed in the vertical direction rather than the horizontal direction for the planar device. All elements of the planar MOSFET are present in the VMOS, the metallic surface connection to the terminals of the device, the silicon dioxide layer between the gate and the p-type region between the drain and source for the growth of the induced in-channel enhancement mode operation. The appearance of a V cut in the semiconductor base which often stands out as a characteristic for mental memorization of the name of the device. In this illustration, for an enhancement type MOSFET, the drain and the transfer function has been set side by side to describe the transfer process from one to the other. The drain current is zero microamps for VGS less than or equal to VT. For an in-channel or an induced device, the transfer curve is totally in the positive VGS region and does not rise until VGS equals VT. To draw the transfer curve, first draw a horizontal line at ID equals zero microamps from VGS equals zero to VGS equals 2V as shown. Next, a level of VGS greater than VGT such as 3V is chosen and substituted to determine the resulting level of ID equals 5 milliamps where ID equals 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3 times 3V minus 2V squared equals 0.5 milliamps. For construction of a P-channel enhancement type MOSFET is the exact reverse of that appearing in this illustration. That is, there is now an N-type substrate and P-dope regions under the drain and source connections. The parasitic components in an N-channel power MOSFET appear between the two body implants and restricts current flow when the depletion widths of the two adjacent body diodes extends into the drift region with increasing drain voltage. CGS is the capacitance due to the overlap of the source and the channel regions by the polysilicon gate and is independent of applied voltage. CGD consists of two parts. The first capacitance associated with the overlap of the polysilicon gate and the silicon underneath in the JFET region. The second part is the capacitance associated with the depletion region immediately under the gate. CGD is a nonlinear function of voltage. Finally, CDS, the capacitance associated with the body drift diode, varies inversely with the square root of the drain source bias. There are currently two designs of power MOSFETs, usually referred to as the planar, shown in slide 12, and the trench, shown in slide 13. The trench technology has the advantage of higher cell density, but is more difficult to manufacture than the planar device. 
the maximum gate to source voltage is normally provided in the list of maximum ratings of the device. The on-state resistance of a power MOSFET is made up of several components. RDS on equals R source plus R channel plus R accumulation resistance plus R JFET component resistance of the region between the two body regions plus R epi plus R substrate resistance. During turn on, capacitors CGD and CGS are charged through the gate, so the gate control circuit design must consider the variation in this capacitance. The MOSFET parasitic capacitance is as CISS, COSS, and CRSS, where CGSS equals CISS minus CRSS, CDS equals COSS minus CRSS, CRSS equals the small signal reverse transfer capacitance, where CISS equals the small signal input capacitance with the drain and source terminals are shorted, and COSS equals the small signal output capacitance with the gate and source terminals shorted. The MOSFET capacitors are nonlinear as well as a function of the DC bias voltage. This concludes our presentation for Power MOSFET Basics, a simple guide for the learning engineer. I would like to thank our intern, Sammy Ninjim, for his contribution to the slides. This is Natasha Townsend, and I can be emailed at ntownsend at wtwhmedia.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at dw underscore electrical. Have a great day.